What's up everyone, it's Swadra and I'm back for a new video. So, yesterday, at least by the time I'm recording this, a certain thing happened. Mainly Series 7 of Doctor Who came out. Or at least the first episode did. And I thought I would give it a little review because I love the show and I was looking to, for it to come out. I was looking forward to that. And then it did. And also this new series, it's going to be a bit of a big one. It's got a new showrunner, new writers, new directors, new composer, and obviously the most important thing that people may be talking about with it is the new Doctor's not a man, it's a woman. And I knew this episode it had to go well. If this episode failed, or was received badly, or Jodie's Doctor was received badly, it would pretty much destroy the idea of another female Doctor for a long time. So, Jodie had to do well, the writers had to do well, this episode had to do well. After the rest of the season. And I'm very happy to say that it did better than well. That episode was amazing. Definitely worth the watch. And, oh, I love everything about it. I was really hoping it would do well because I want to see Jodie succeed and she did. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go into this and we're going to have a little review. So, let's get started. And if you haven't seen the episode yet, watch at your own risk because I will be discussing spoilers for the episode. Enjoy! So we start off with the story. The story for it was pretty good. It was simple in its idea. An alien comes to Earth to hunt a specific person as a trophy for a sort of ritual on their home planet to become the leader of their race. Pretty simple. Takes some cues from Predator with the, you know, hunting certain species, things like that. I liked it. It was simple enough to follow. Still engaging. It was fantastic. It managed to keep you guessing all the way until the end of what was going to happen. At the beginning you're wondering what the two aliens had in common. And then you're trying to figure out what was they were both doing, what was happening. Then we found out why they were here. And then it left us guessing as to what was going to happen next, how the Doctor was going to save the day. And it was fantastic. It was also a much smaller story, which I liked. It wasn't big end of the world story, which was referenced a few times with the Doctor saying, oh, I don't know, is this going to be the end of the world type thing? And they could have done that, but I preferred seeing a smaller scale story. For me, it was just a much better situation for them to be in and much better for the opening of the show as well. The story is also very character driven at points, with the relationships between the different characters taking focus in some parts, which I love. So I'm a big fan of uh, characterization and developing characters. So to see that in this episode was really good. And I look forward to the rest of the season to see more of the development. And that brings us on to our next point of characters. So we start off with the first character we're introduced to in the episode, Ryan Sinclair. He seems like a really nice character, I like him a lot, I like seeing the way he interacts with everyone, the way he seems to want to prove that he can do things on his own, he's not useless, and I like that a lot, it makes him very relatable to a lot of people, and I, I just sympathise with him from the very beginning, I wanted to see more of him, and what he would get up to, and what he would do, and I wasn't disappointed with this episode either, so kudos to that. I also like that they gave him dyspraxia, but what I really like is it didn't make it the focal point of his character. It wasn't a case of, oh look, we've got someone with an illness or a disability or something like that. It was, he had it, but he was still a person, despite that. And that's what I liked. Uh, so I really liked the way they implemented that. They showed it off more than just a one-off throwaway line. You know, we saw it happen when he was climbing the crane, we saw it with the bike, but it wasn't the focal point of his character and it wasn't, didn't seem like it would be his big development was getting over that or dealing with that. That'll happen, but it's not going to be the focal point from what I can see, and I like that a lot. Going from there, we have Yasmin Khan, who was a fantastic character, I loved her. I like seeing her, she seems strong, independent, but needing to prove that she can do better than people think she can, and I like that a lot, it gives her a drive. I also like seeing the way she like wants to help people. It's shown from the fact that she's a police officer, and from there, the way she's always willing to take more cases to try and help people. She's obviously smart, she manages to deal with all different situations, and I love her a lot. And because of her willingness to help people and want to prove herself, I get the feeling she'll be a fantastic companion for the Doctor. You know, two strong-willed 
women who want to help others. And I see Yasmin is looking up to the doctor and wanting to impress her to show that she can do it as well. And I think that'll be fantastic. And I can I can actually see the doctor taking her under her wing as a sort of well, I mean she takes everyone under her wing. But on a more personal level with Yaz, because of how similar they can be at times. Also the doctor's a lot more alien and whimsical as well, but that need to help people. I think that's gonna draw them very close together, and I love that. Next up we have Graham. Graham's an older gentleman, you know, older, survived with a battle of cancer, but he's still really interesting. And I think it's nice to see that change, see an older character mixing in and interacting with the younger cast as well, showing the difference in the way they do things and the way they deal with different situations. I like the way that he seems very grounded and realistic about things. He's not just jumping into things and jumping to wild conclusions, he tries to think logically about it first. He has real world experience and real world logic to rely on, which doesn't always work, but he put it to good use. And it's, I like, because they showed that as being the thing that helped him find the information coil creature thing. It was his knowledge and his experiences that found them. I just think he will be a fantastic character and it'll be really cool to see him bouncing off the younger cast, but also with the Doctor who, while well, looking young, is actually much older, as we all know, and I think that'll be a really interesting change. Next up is Grace. Lovely Grace. Sweet Grace. I loved her a lot. From the very first bit with her, I thought she was a really interesting character. Very caring and fun. She seemed like she was willing to go on any adventure and really upbeat about things. And obviously her willingness to help as well. It's mentioned throughout the show, we see her from the very beginning, helping Ryan with the bikes, her willingness to jump in and help on the train, the way she sacrificed herself to help Ryan and Yasmin and the Doctor at the end. It's it, she's a very helping character and it was a real shame to see her be killed off because I thought they could have done so much with her. I can understand why they did it to build relationships between Ryan and Graham more, but I would have loved to have seen more of her. Really would have. But her death was handled very well and I liked that a lot too. And then of course we come to the final main character that we need to discuss. The Doctor. The brand new exciting Doctor and I, oh, I love her. I was very worried about Jodie taking over, not because it was a female Doctor, but because of how badly it could have went wrong if it hadn't been handled right. The Doctor in this episode was fantastic. No, and it had that whimsical, wacky, post-regeneration things that we love to see, while also maintaining a lot of the older Doctors and her own take on it with the new version, and I loved that a lot. We saw a lot of Jodie's own interpretation of the character shining through, she was fantastical, she was caring, we could see it from the way she was willing to hope with Ryan about his dad coming back at the funeral. We saw the way she attended the funeral, the way she was caring for everyone, the way she understood family and everything like that. She was a very caring character and I loved it. We were also maintaining all the stuff that makes the Doctor the Doctor. Especially near the end where she's, even despite everything, the, the murders and the attempted murder of herself and her friends, she still gives the bad guy a chance to escape. Even at the very end, she gives him the option to get out and return home safely. And that is a doctor. And it's not just that, it's, it's also the things like seeing her getting more hands-on, seeing her being brainy, trying to figure it out, seeing her building a new sonic screwdriver, just jumping up, jumping across cranes to try and save people. She's a very, she seems like she'll be a very hands-on, very active doctor and Oh, I am looking forward to seeing more of Jodie as a Doctor because she has done a fantastic job with this first episode. And now we're coming to our last main character to speak of, Sim Shah, or as it's jokingly referred to in the show by Jodie, Tim Shaw. <laughs> Tim Shaw was a really interesting character. He wasn't here to destroy the Earth, he wasn't here for any vengeance or anything like that. He was just here because it's what his people do. He was here for a ritual, a ceremony of sorts. And that was really good, I liked that a lot. Tim Shaw was also a very creepy villain. He made it more intense. Just the way he acted, the way he was so brutal and confident. But on Doctor, the physical appearance of his face being filled with teeth. And not his own teeth, but the teeth from other people who he's taken them from after killing them. That is really impressive and it's a, it makes him seem a, like a much darker character. 
and a much darker villain. It actually makes you fear for the characters of Rongji, which in the end ultimately did happen with Grace dying to stop him as well. Or more accurately, trying to stop him, stop his pet from killing the Doctor, Yaz and Ryan. He had a really cool design as well. His armour and mask it sort of gave me a Spartan from Halo vibe, especially the mask. That especially gave me it. But at the same time was original and cool. And I loved it a lot. Especially the idea of him being so cold that he has that permanent s cold steam coming off him. His weapon, his ability to just kill someone by touching them because he is so freezing cold. I love that a lot. It's a very interesting thing. And it'd be pretty cool to see him or his species coming up against the Ice Warriors. See how they work together. <laughs> Next I want to talk about the setting. Because, as you may have noticed from this episode, it was not set in London. Which I'm very happy about. Yeah, London's fine, we're used to it, but it's pretty bleh these days. Every, almost every episode's set in London, if it's not off of Earth. You know, I'm sick of London. Who cares about London? Give us somewhere new. And that's what they did, they gave us Sheffield. And I don't know much about Sheffield in real life, but it seemed like a great setting in this episode. Not so cramped and cl closed in like it is in London, but nice and open and a lot of space and a lot of m room to manoeuvre in. And it worked fantastically. It's a great setting and it was used masterfully by the writers and the directors and I loved it a lot. The use of that type of setting also worked to make some beautiful shots like whenever Ryan is trying to ride the bike or those areas around it. Fantastic looking. Seeing the hills and all the greenery and the houses in the background it was fantastic and it looked amazing. Also side note, the show looks amazing. I think they've got a higher budget this year, which I am so happy about. Overall, the setting for this episode, in my opinion, was fantastic. It, they could have pulled it off in a big city like London, but I think it does work a lot better being away from the cities. So, well done to Chris Chibnall for deciding to put it there. Well, also, I also want to talk about the music in this episode. I was very hesitant and worried when I heard Murray Gold wasn't coming back for the next season of Doctor Who. Because he's been with it since the very first episode back in 2005. He has been the music of Doctor Who for the last 13 years. So to hear that someone else was taking over, I was very worried. However, the new guy, Segan Akinola, has done a fantastic job so far. I loved the music he did in this episode. It just felt very Doctor Who. It captured it perfectly. And that new theme music is very good. It sounds a lot like the old classic music. Maybe 60s, 70s. But with some modern era stuff thrown in as well and it works fantastically. I can't wait to hear the rest of his work throughout this season. I think he's going to do a fantastic job if this first episode is anything to go by. This episode has its funny moments, it can be whimsical and jokey, but overall it seemed to be a very serious and slightly darker episode than what we've had before. And I really hope it continues for the rest of the season in that way because I loved it. It was darker and intense and interesting but not at the expense of alienating people who prefer some lighter stuff and the, the younger viewers. It doesn't alienate them. It was the perfect balance of darker for older viewers and lighthearted for younger viewers. It's a difficult balance to match, but they managed it. And I've said it earlier, obviously the use of the villain was very good in that. I mean, what if the villain murders anyone who gets in their way and then stops to rip out their teeth and implant them in his own face. That is some dark shit, and I loved it. As long as the show keeps on that way without going too dark or too childish, I'll be very happy. So overall, the season 11 opener of Doctor Who was, in my opinion, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. The music was great, the companions were amazing, it had a really interesting villain, the use of setting and tone was brilliant as well, and of course, the Doctor. As I said at the beginning, Jodie's version of the Doctor had to succeed, otherwise it could spell disaster for the show, and then the chances of another female Doctor later on. Thankfully, as I've said, she done fantastically, she really captured the spirit of the Doctor and made it her own, and I think she's been an amazing success so far. I can't wait to see the rest of what she does with the season, we'll see how the character grows under her performance and I'm very much looking forward to it. Anyone who hasn't seen it yet, whether it's because you've just not had the time or because you're worried about being a female doctor or being a new head writer, trust me, go see it. It is fantastic, you will not regret it. It has been a fantastic opener and I think Jodie's doing a fantastic job with acting 
as is the companions and Chris Chibnall as a showrunner. Definitely worth the watch, it's fantastic and it's the first time in a few years I've been genuinely excited for Doctor Who. So definitely go watch it if you haven't and if you have, why don't comment down below and let me know what you thought about it, what you'd like to dislike, what you'd like to see happen later in the season, the types of growth you'd like to see, come on, let me know about that. Let's get a discussion about it going. If you have seen the episode, why not comment down below and let me know what you just thought about it, what you liked, didn't like, what you'd like to see more of. You know, let's get a discussion about it going down below because I'd love to hear what other people thought about it. And why not hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with any new videos I release. But that's where I'm going to end it today, guys. So until the next time, bye!